So looking at four strategies for coping with stress, including biofeedback, relaxation and meditation, we'll look at exercise, and then social support. The aim of biofeedback is to help the patient gain control over their physiological response to a stressor. And this is achieved through practice use of relaxation techniques in which the patient receives biofeedback when exposed to a mild stressor, let's say a particular maths problem that they've got to do in a short time period. And the feedback might be a in relation to muscle tension for a specific muscle that's linked to migraines, could be heart rate, skin temperature, etc. And biofeedback has been successfully used to deal with the cause of a physiological response in relation to a stressor, such as cause of migraine, insomnia, back pain, constipation, etc. So the use of biofeedback is a three-step process. The first step is they're given feedback on a physiological response that would be initiated by the fight-flight response when exposed to a stressor, such as heart rate. Step two, they're taught a series of strategies that could involve mental exercises, such as imagining yourself in a tranquil scene where you're totally relaxed, taking yourself away from that anxiety-producing situation or it could be some type of physiological exercise like deep and controlled breathing. Thus the patient will receive feedback, biofeedback, about their how these exercises influence their physiological response, which leads to the third facet of the process in which they must have continued presentation of this physiological information to basically learn how to control their physiological responses when they're exposed to the stressor. A second strategy for managing stress could be meditation, which is a self-induced altered state of consciousness, which we go into in order to gain some type of personal benefit, such as dealing with the cause of a stress response. Or we could use relaxation, which is simply the act of refreshing the body. So literally doing an activity that is quite distant and divorced from an anxiety-producing situation such as work or school. Both reduce physiological arousal, hence have physiological benefits. So therefore, both are effective in managing the impact of stress. A third strategy we could use is physical exercise, whether it be aerobic, which is sustained exertion, or anaerobic, which involves short, intense bursts, sprints, doing high weights, low repetitions, etc. Both are effective at reducing anxiety levels, but aerobic exercise, that sustained exertion, is more effective than anaerobic exercise. So what are the benefits of exercise? Well, increasing the production of beta endorphins, which provide us with those good sensation, diverts attention away from our stressor, which could be school, work, etc. Reducing muscle tension, particularly for that aerobic exercise, long distance running, swimming, cycling, etc. And importantly, uses up some of those stress hormones, cortisol, that are released by the HPA axis when we're under stress. The fourth and final strategy we'll look at is social support. We might receive tangible assistance, shelter, food, money, emotional support from a loved one, appraisal support from a third party that gives us information about our coping options, information support in relation to the stressor.